Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this is my last introductory lecture uh, to solid geometry, geometry in three-dimensional space. Now, I call all these lectures introductory because I'm just explaining concepts uh, and objects we will be dealing with um, without getting into any kind of properties, no theorems, no problems. It's just the language, basically, if you wish. So this is the language of solid geometry, where I am talking about what kind of um, geometrical objects we will be dealing with, what are the elements of uh, these objects. Now, in this last lecture, I would like to um, devote to um, construction problems, not to solve them, but to explain what is a construction problem in uh, three-dimensional world. You see, if I'm talking about plane geometry, two-dimensional geometry, I can always use my, my board as, as basically a plane where everything happens, and I have usually two main instruments for construction, a straight ruler and a compass. Um, now, these are the main elements for three-dimensional geometry as well. However, I understand that there is a problem constructing a plane in, in the three-dimensional object. I mean, physically it's difficult to construct. You cannot use just a regular sheet of paper and, and a pencil, for instance, and a compass and a straight ruler to, to do the, um, the construction. So we have to make certain assumption. Um, now, I would like to assume something, and then, and then I can say, okay, if these conditions are met, then let's assume that construction is basically done. All right, so here is what I actually mean. For instance, our purpose is to create, to construct a plane in a three-dimensional world. Well, what the condition I would like to impose is the following. If I have three points in the space where I definitely know our plane is supposed to pass, then I consider that the, the construction problem has been solved. So if somebody asks, okay, could you construct the plane which satisfies such and such conditions? And I found three points where this plane, plane is supposed to pass. Then I consider my, my job is finished. My construction uh, problem is solved, as long as I found these three points. Another uh, example of this is, if I have only one point and a line, and the point is outside of the line. Well, according to certain axioms, according to certain principles of 3D geometry, the, there is one and only one plane which uh, passes through this line and the point outside it. Which means that I can say that, okay, fine, my job is finished. As long as I found my line and the point, my plane has been properly and completely defined. So my construction problem is solved. Now, what else about the, the, the plane? Another is you have two intersecting lines. There is one and only one line which goes through two intersecting lines in space. And, uh, and the fourth part is if I have two parallel lines in space, then there is one and only one plane which passes through these. So if I know that I have two lines which are intersecting or I have two parallel lines and I'm looking for a plane and I know that the plane actually passes through these lines or these planes, lines, I consider the job is done. Now, this is all about the planes. Now, how about other uh, geometrical objects? Okay, how about um, cylindrical surface. Now, cylindrical surface is defined by, if you remember, a directrix and a, a straight line which is uh, called generat generatrix. And my cylindrical surface is basically when I'm taking every point on this curve, which does not necessarily be a flat curve, it can be whatever in space I can think about. And through every point on this curve, I draw a line parallel this one. So it's a set of all these 
points and all these lines represent a cylindrical surface okay so I consider that if I have a directrix and I have a generatrix then I have my cylindrical surface I don't really have to physically construct it right now if a particular kind for instance a prism is needed to be uh, to be constructed well it means that I have certain um, directories as a flat polygon and I have a, a, a another line which is a straight line called directories and then I consider everything is done now if my uh, prism is supposed to be uh, uh, as a, a right prism of, of certain height. What does it mean? Well, it means I have to have my polygon at the base, and I have to have the the altitude or the height, the prism, which is just a, a segment actually. Now I can build a prism based on these two. Why? Uh, well, this. Uh, polygon lies in certain uh, uh, plane let's call it base plane right then there is another base plane which is on this distance from this one and that's sufficient to build a, a prism like this so all I need to know is again directress and the altitude, the height of the prism, of the right prism in this particular case. So this again is an example of uh, sufficiency of knowledge of certain elements to basically consider that the job of construction is done because there is one and only one prism in this case which satisfies these conditions. That this is the directress and this is the, um, the altitude. What's next? Next is a uh, uh, cylinder, for instance. Okay, what do I have to know about cylinder? Well, again, I have to know the directors. Directors of a cylinder is a circle. So I have to know actually what is this circle about, which means, by the way, to know the center. If I have the plane where it belongs to, I need a point on that plane, which is the center, and the radius. So if I know this, I consider my circle defined and I have to know if it's a right cylinder I have to know again its height and I can build it this way I can build it in my imagination not necessarily in three-dimensional space um, and uh, again the sufficient condition is a plane where uh, the, the, the base is located another plane difference in the distance between these planes which is the height of the cylinder and location of uh, of the base the circle uh, which is basically a center and the radius um, now let's go to conical surfaces now what defines conical surface well conical surface is defined by a point called apex and uh, and a directrix right some curve in space so again, if these two things are given, if this is my apex and this is my curve, then I can consider my job is done because I can always draw all these lines through every point on this and this point, right? Now, a particular kind of conical surface, like a pyramid, for instance, what do I have to know about the pyramid? Again, apex and some kind of a plane where I have a, a polygon which is a base polygon of the uh, pyramid now I can just connect every point etc so I consider my job is done if I have this polygon on the base plane and the point in space which is an apex same thing with cylinder uh, cylinder is supposed to, to be a circle uh, not, not cylinder, sorry, sorry cone. Uh, we are talking about conical uh, surfaces. So I need a circle in the base, which means again I have to have a plane and a circle in it, defined by a center and a radius, and then I have to have a point which is an apex of this cone. What's left? Sphere. 
Okay, what do I have to know for sphere, center, and the radius of the sphere, right? So if I know these two, it means I can construct it, at least virtually in my imagination, but nevertheless it's sufficient to consider the problem as solved. So here is, for instance, uh, here is a, an example. For instance, you want to <coughs> construct a, a sphere which is tangential to all the faces of uh, a tetrahedron. So this is your tetrahedron. And I would like to have a sphere which is inside and touches, it's tangential to, to every face, these three and, and the fourth. So all four faces are supposed to, to be tangential to, uh, to the sphere. I did not define properly what tangential plane to a sphere is, but you basically understand it. If this is a ball and this is a tangential plane, right? So, what, how can I solve this problem? If my uh, tetrahedron is given in some way, then um, maybe, for instance, I know all four points where they're located or something like this. Then, if I can, based on this, find a center of this sphere and a radius, then I consider my job of constructing is done. So that's basically... Um, the approach which I would like to talk, which I would like to take with all these construction problems in 3D. You don't really have to, to draw it in, in three-dimensional space because it's kind of difficult, but what you do have to do is to establish sufficient number of elements of a three-dimensional figure, three-dimensional object, which define this object uniquely. So for a sphere, for instance, it's a center and a radius. For the right circular cylinder, it's the uh, circle uh, in, in the base plane and its height, etc. So that's basically it. That's my approach and I will use this particular uh, approach when solving all the different construction problems um, in the future. Well, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.